Today I got to turn this tiny little burner into something ferocious that doesn't just blow out when you turn the gas up. So that's what we got going on today. We got a brick kiln to run here. So we're going to be building a burner that has six of these things inside of each burner. And it's going to have multiple burners. Hey, what's up, fellas? Doing some burner testing here today. I need to build the most massive propane burner I've ever seen, basically. And I'm just kind of messing around with the initial setup configuration. And right now we are running a 2.78 millimeter orifice which is just a little too hot. Let me show you what I mean here. By the way, this thing will not burn without this shroud on here, which is also kind of interesting. I'm also messing with the effects of the position of the spray nozzle, just by sliding things back and forth. So I'm gonna be sliding that back and forth and testing that. And one of the peculiar things that was noted during the first test I did, I turned on the propane gas without lighting it and put my hand right here and a tremendous vacuum is being created. So I'm very pleased. Same thing right here with this secondary shroud. We have a dual Ventura going on here. This is also pulling a very strong vacuum. And without this on here, the burner will not burn. So I've been sliding this back and forth also to determine what is the optimum size of this outer shroud these are the parts I'm drawing for the cutout on the plasma table. Um, it's basically going to have a refractory brick interior lining. So six of those burners will be juxtaposed like this. And we're going to have a ceramic or a fire brick lining to give us a super heat zone. The discharge of this burner is this piece right here. And that's going to be fire brick. So there's gonna be a bit of a turbulence in here, creating quite the ruckus. And that ought to heat that fire brick up quite a bit. She's still a little hot. That's close enough, 40 millimeter cowling. And... It's actually a little smoother. Okay, we're going with 20 millimeter this time. like uh, 40 was pretty good there in this test we're gonna do a five millimeter reveal for a couple seconds too long <laughs> the metal on the blower fan started warping i heard it scraping so we're gonna try that that was uh pretty phenomenal right there we were able to open that valve full blast on this tank which you know ain't nothing to write home about if we were at 120 psi still i'd be impressed okay we're now doing a 50 millimeter cowling with a five millimeter standoff. And we're still pretty much at about, what about 10 millimeter standoff on the front nozzle there. I don't know how much I like that. Thought we were more than that. I would imagine we're not gonna be able to turn it up that high like this.
that settles that. 50 meter cowling it is. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna change the spud size down to the smaller 1.98 millimeter drill bit. The hole size will be slightly larger than that, of course. But the purpose of this would be to get a higher velocity spray, which would make a more powerful air blower or a ejector is what this is actually called. It's not a very efficient ejector. If we were to make an actual ejector shape on this section, we could probably increase the performance five-fold. All right, we have the new orifice in. We are now running the 1.98 millimeter. This is the one that we did have in there. As you can see, it's a monster. It is giving us that hot feather I was telling you about. handle hardly nothing it's pumping way too much air that doesn't mean it won't work in the other combustion chamber though all right guys we see here that by superimposing we're looking at two different flames obviously one flame's hotter than the other the one on the bottom a little bit colder more BTUs coming out of that thing, but this is what we want. It's a smaller, tighter, hotter flame. I gotta say, guys, it definitely had a better mixing feature. We had an inner cone this time, whereas before, I wanna say it was a, a homogeneous flame. My recollection fails me often. It has to get to my long-term memory before I can remember it. So, just one more quick recap here. You can see here we don't have that inner cone here. But here, we've got a screaming white hot inner cone. So this is definitely the nozzle we're gonna choose for this test. We're going with the 50 millimeter cowling. That's gonna heat that brick up a lot better. Yeah, that's flush. Yeah, it definitely runs crappier flush. I certainly don't get this backward direction action. That is just so weird. Far better performance. Ah. We were really getting up there though. Okay, we're gonna try the last little test just to show you why we have the cowling, period. So maybe I should get those out of the way. They're messing with it. Not a little bad flame in itself with that spud, but we ain't trying to do this. You can see it's just not able to do anything. So, I think I like the spud. I think I like the hardware we just seen. I think we're gonna stick with that one centimeter standoff. Apparently a lot of people are suffering from the coal pandemic. There's a huge coal crisis going on. I don't know if that's why they contacted me, but these individuals have requested that I build them a burner that runs on LP gas, liquid petroleum. So their brick kilns typically run on coal. But as we all know, that's how they're heating this thing. So. We got to turn this thing into a natural gas-fired setup or liquid petroleum. 